Welcome to Meet Your Neighbor. I am stretched out on a slab of teak wood, one piece of teak wood that is part of the furniture of Nayanika Yelapiti. And we are in her home today to learn more about Nayanika as well as her surroundings. And what she has to say is that every piece, every item in her home, it has a story, and it seems that Nayanika has many stories to share. So please join me. Hello, Nayanika. Thank you for having us at your home this morning here in Hopkinton. And uh, you have a, a lovely home here. And we're in the middle of a harsh winter outside, but it's really warm and bright and vibrant in here and uh, so are you and yeah, thank you <laughs> um, so we're here to um today to get to know you and hear some of your stories and i know you moved to hopkinton 10 years ago um from india mm -hmm. and i wonder why hopkinton why why did you come here from so far away what brought you to hopkinton Ah, well, first of all, thank you so much, Cheryl, for giving me this opportunity. It's, um, um, it's been a pleasure knowing you. I'm so glad we met a couple of years ago, I think, right. now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just impressed by all the stuff that you do, you know, uh, community-related events. And um, I think it's just awesome. Thank you. Um, so uh, let me just jump back a little bit uh, and say that we didn't come here to Hopkinton first. Mm -hmm. When we came from India in 2003, we were living in Chestnut Hill mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and then we moved to West Roxbury and it was at West Roxbury that I had my daughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were living in a small apartment and when she started walking, you know, she was bouncing off the walls and we thought that, you know, <laughs> she needs more space. And of course, you know, once the children come along, you start thinking about school districts and mm -hmm. uh, so after doing, having done our research, we uh, fixed on Hopkinton mm -hmm. and I liked uh, I chose Hopkinton because uh, I mean of course the good schools and also I like the small town feel to it mm -hmm. uh, though it did uh, sort of take some time adjusting to you know the quietness and mm -hmm. uh, after moving from the city um, but I think uh, it was a good move Mm -hmm. uh, my daughter loves it here. Now we love it here. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't ever think of going back and sit, uh, living in a, you know, in an apartment in Boston, and mm -hmm. you know, though it has its pros and cons, mm -hmm. everything. But we love it here, and uh, and I'm slowly getting to, you know, meet people beyond my immediate uh, neighborhood and people like you, for example, who are putting me in touch with so many different things and you know that's sort of opening up a lot of windows for me too mm -hmm. and uh, I like it. Mm -hmm. Oh that's good to hear. Um, so you, would you have any advice for a newcomer coming into Hopkinton um, from, city, uh, from the city or uh, say from another country any uh, advice that you'd offer or something you think that would be helpful for do you mean to sorry do you mean to Hopkinton specifically or or a, a town like Hopkinton also um, well I can't speak to uh, anybody else uh, you know because I come from India so I think I know uh, uh, what the Indian uh, background and environment is and you know how different it is from the environment here mm -hmm. um, so I would say that uh, for me personally, when I first came here, I was overwhelmed by the vastness. Mm. Um, it's wide open spaces. Mm. Um, in India, in, especially in the metropolises, you hardly see the skyline. And, you know, they're just tall buildings everywhere yeah. and hardly any vegetation, which is such a pity. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, then there's the attendant noise and the pollution and, you know, there's noise pollution, air pollution. Mm -hmm. Uh, the traffic is insane. So those are all things that uh, that's so different. I mean, that's the first thing that struck me mm -hmm. uh, when I came here. And uh, after moving from Boston to Hopkinton, the thing that struck me most was the silence. Oh, yeah. So that took some getting used mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. 
but now I'm so used to this now that when I go back to visit India, mm -hmm. I can't take that noise. I have to, you know, I can't go to sleep without putting some earplugs in and, you know, just to filter out all the noise. Uh -huh. um, Something we take for granted around Yeah, exactly. Here, the quiet. The quietness and the fact that you can walk on the streets um, without feeling, you know, there's so much particulate pollution in uh, India, mm -hmm. in the metropolises. Here you can still walk, you know, without feeling suffocated or... Mm -hmm. And the traffic, of course, is so much better to drive in here. And these are all the things that I think uh, for a person who comes new um, would, uh, would, would immediately perceive and mm -hmm. appreciate. Yeah. Well, that is good to hear and be reminded of as sometimes people uh, get used to and take for granted such things. And yeah. uh, those are very important. Uh, things that contribute to quality of life um, that we are fortunate for here. And um, let's see, I know that uh, you came from India 10 years ago and um, you're now working on citizenship in Boston. Um, yes. And uh, so is that soon coming for you? We hope so. I just had the interview yesterday and uh, um, it was fun um, because they have these mandatory 10 questions that they ask you about who's the president, who's the vice president and stuff uh -huh, like that. Yeah. And uh, um, I think we should be getting the citizenship in another three or four weeks. Uh -huh. oh, well, that is exciting. Yes. Um, it it uh, does uh, make things easier uh, from the perspective of travel, international travel, because you don't have to keep, uh, you know, getting applying for visas if you want to travel to this country mm -hmm. or that country. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yes. And uh, uh, how often do you go back to India? At least once a year. Once a year, because you have family. Yes. My mom lives alone there. Mm -hmm. uh, she's old. She's 83 years old. So I want to, you know, spend as much time as I can. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to have her here. I'm working on it. I'm yeah. hoping to have her here this summer. Yeah. So. Well. And what would you say, besides your mother, is something that you miss uh, from India, your home and growing up and your younger years? Well, the India that I was, I grew up in is very different from yeah. what it is now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's really nothing that I would miss per se. Yeah. Uh, the, but I do love going back you know, for short vacations mm -hmm. and doing all my shopping and my eating and mm -hmm. um, and there are a few places that I haven't yet uh, visited in India which I hope to be able to do. So since last year we are trying to um, take 10 days, um, you know, put aside 10 days to visit different parts of the country. Mm -hmm. Like the Northeast is a very beautiful place, places like Bhutan, Sikkim, um, Assam mm -hmm. and the uh, Northwest. Uh, Arunachal Pradesh, uh, Himachal Pradesh. Mm -hmm. These are beautiful places, and uh, I would love to, you know, share that with uh, Dia too, with my daughter. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds exciting, um, and yeah. sound like interesting places. Maybe you could yes. give some talk uh, talks around here uh, to your hometown neighbors. Uh, Absolutely, and tell yeah. About your adventures because those are very far away and. Yes, absolutely. And you know, even though all the, they are all states in India, but each state is so different yeah. in terms of the culture and the language, of course, and the food. Um, so it's, uh, you know, you, even though you just fly maybe one hour uh, to get to a different part of the country, it's like a whole different world. Wow. And uh, the, even the art and the music is very different. Mm -hmm. Well, um, that sounds interesting and uh, to, it would be exciting to hear more. And so leaving behind uh, India, arriving over here uh, to Massachusetts, to Hopkinton last 10 years. Uh, so you ha are now here, you've left uh, uh, your, your culture and your early roots of things there, but I know you uh, 
keep with music and the art a bit of yes. India that way. You're part of a, a music group that sings yes. in Indian. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. um, so uh, we are a very amorphous uh, group of singers. Uh -huh. um, and we sing mostly Bollywood music. Bollywood. Okay. Yes. So to karaoke define music. Bollywood for those who don't know. Okay. So Bollywood is uh, the uh, name for the Indian film industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you know, styled after Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Indian film industry uh, actually is a very prolific uh, industry. I mean, they, we churn out movies like, I think we are uh, next to us is the Nigerian film industry. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and uh, so in the 70s, it was in the 70s when uh, the Indian film industry, I think in one year, it, there were some 453 films released mm -hmm. and it overtook Hollywood at that point. Wow. So, okay. so then they titled themselves, the, wow. the industry was titled Bollywood. Okay. And uh, so Bollywood is, uh, I don't know uh, how, there are a few theaters locally that do uh, premiere uh, uh, Bollywood films. Like I think the Regal Cinemas in Westboro, and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the people, everybody in India, I mean, for them, film is like food. You know, the movies are like food. Um, it's essential as. Part. It is an essential part of uh -huh. uh, growing up, of living, of life. Um, I mean, there are people who who would be who would form lines long lines outside the movie theater for the very first uh, show mm -hmm. uh, and they would spend money you know in any amount of money to buy a ticket and mm -hmm. catch the first show especially of their favorite heroes or heroines and all kinds of uh, different film genres or do they tend to be musical and dramatic it's uh, the Indian films have always had music in them, mm -hmm. and uh, so yes, I suppose you could term call them musicals in that sense. Uh, but it's most usually a love story. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a drama, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, girl meet boy, and uh, fall they fall in love, and then you know, and then fate intervenes, and something happens, and then there's. Uh, uh, several scenes, uh, tragic scenes, and you know, mm -hmm. all that drama happens. Mm -hmm. And uh, but then most movies always have a happy ending. It's always you know they lived happily ever after kind mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. So uh, having grown up on a diet of that, yeah. uh, you know, one tends to think that okay, life usually has happy endings. Mm -hmm. So we are a very positive uh, outlook on life, mm -hmm. mostly due to even the uh, culture that we are brought up in. Um, the Hindu culture is a very pacifist uh, kind of culture and uh, I don't like to use the word fatalistic mm -hmm. even though it has been uh, some people say that but uh, we tend to you know say that okay this has happened uh, it happens mm -hmm. life happens and you just get on with life mm -hmm. you know um, and so it's very um, Given the kind of circumstances that right. most people have in India, that face in India, I mean, I think we are born survivors. Mm -hmm. um, Our survival instincts are very strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with that kind of attitude. Exactly. And then um, if there are things in the uh, surrounding, um, like movies, that might be of uplift, uh, that helps even a little yeah, more. Yes, so movies form, uh, do uh, serve a purpose, very important purpose. They're a form of escape, mm -hmm. entertainment. And, uh, but unfortunately also, it's always, you know, the question, does life imitate art or art imitate life? Mm -hmm. So, sometimes, I mean, you know, um, there are the negative uh, aspects that are portrayed in films that people tend to copy and, you know, integrate into their daily life. And mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, a lot of people have, find it difficult to separate the two and, you know, like what I'm referring to is, for example, this, uh, a growing trend that has been very popular in the Indian film industry and even in TV serials is the mother-in-law, daughter-in-law equation. So, uh, where the mother-in-law is typically portrayed as the evil woman and uh, so it, it is a lot of entertainment and it's, it's doubtless a fact for many uh, families, you know, where uh, the mother-in-law has total control over the family and uh, 
but these kind of things you know tend to uh, what shall we say foster mm -hmm. uh, foster stuff rather than you know instead of you know media can play a really important role and you know it can sort of uh, help change things around mm -hmm. if they want to so it opens people's eyes also exactly. the movies to potential for change right. as well so well, that is fascinating, and uh, I'd love to talk more, but I know there's so much more uh, with you in your life that we should try to cover, or I would like to anyway. So you, you uh, keep with uh, the Bollywood music, you mm -hmm. sing with a group here, yes. and I know that you have an appreciation for um, design and decoration within the home, which is a bit of art and a bit of collection of uh, decorative items. Uh, I know you have in your own uh, lovely home here with interesting pieces you have on the walls and all around us here. And so you ha it is part of your uh, business right now, your work, uh, that you are offering interior decorating uh, at a uh, a lower cost. Uh, yes. how, I don't know how you phrase that. Uh, uh, yes. So um, I started this uh, small business a year and a half ago, and uh, it's called Jugad. Jugad design. Now, Jugad is a Hindi word. Um, if you were to look it up in uh, Urban Dictionary or something like that, it would. Uh, the definition is that Jugad is a way of life. It's a philosophy of life in India, uh, where you innovate and you create mm -hmm. with what you have. Ah, so it's a frugal a way, idea. it's a frugal way of uh, doing things. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it fits in with our uh, attitude toward uh, the environment and uh, working with less and not consuming as much yes. these days and, and being more green-minded as well as uh, an Indian philosophy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, as part of my, that's that's the philosophy of my design uh, uh, initiative too. It's sustainable choices mm -hmm. for artful living. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to spend a whole lot of money to make your space look good, mm -hmm. or even you know, you just you just need to look at things differently and see how you can maybe repurpose them or um, you know do something different mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, so coming back to my home, when I bought this house in 2009, um, I didn't want to bring any of the old furniture with me. Oh. So I started with a clean slate. Craigslist has been a great resource. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, most of the pieces in my house are from, you know, are used mm -hmm. uh, from other people's homes. Um, and uh, I think that's a in, in today's world, I think that is the only way we to go. Mm -hmm. We can't really afford to cut down more trees. Mm -hmm. We can't really afford to pollute more streams. Mm -hmm. I think we are at the tipping point where, you know, we need to wake up and say that how can we live different mm -hmm. in order for to leave a place behind for our children that mm -hmm. they can live in. Mm -hmm. you know? And still appreciate um, some beauty, a sense of beauty. Um, yes. within our home, but in, at a different level where we're being respectful of our earth. Absolutely, yeah. So when I was, uh, when I was looking around for my furniture and stuff, I mean, uh, style, beauty was important. Functionality is always uh, a priority. Um, and it's also interesting that, you know, every piece of furniture has a story behind it. It belonged. Ah, oh boy! I wish uh, we had more time. Then. Uh, <laughs> is there one in, spe uh, in particular you would like to talk about? Yes, my favorite pieces are the sconces, the wall sconces, uh, the light sconces on the walls. The, uh -huh. It's a pair. Mm -hmm. uh, they are in the brutalist style, uh, the brutalist, brutalist okay. style of uh, design. Um, the artist who made them, uh, it's metal, copper and brass. Uh -huh. And uh, he, I think he, um, the Brutalist worked with uh, metal, um, you know, using uh, those torches to um, make the metal more malleable and shape it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just love that style. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, there are not very many, um, shall we say, fans of that style because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, different tastes, different strokes for different people. Mm -hmm. But um, what about it speaks to you? 
interesting good question uh, I just liked uh, I just like the way it looks yeah. and uh, it's not pretty in the term in terms of you know the shabby chic style it's not you know pretty yeah. and sweet and but I think it's got a beauty of its own mm. It looks a bit like uh, nature, like flowers outside, maybe in the fall to me. Uh, not familiar with this kind of uh, decor, decoration. Right. Um, and uh, I don't know if it's related to the word brutal, uh, but a little bit of a survivor uh, to it, a little rugged. Yeah, I don't know. Like the <laughs> steampunk kind of thing, right? Where they do a lot of stuff with the metal and uh, uh, steampunk is also a very uh, oh, niche kind of uh, oh, okay. style, decor mm -hmm. style. Oh, interesting. I, uh, you don't always, well, um, not everybody thinks about uh, something on the wall in that way. Uh, so right. So with a story behind it, yeah, too. Yeah, the story behind yeah. it. So I found this listing on Craigslist, and uh, it was, I think, in uh, some town that, uh, was it Bedford? I'm not, I don't recall now. So anyway, so I went to this house, and... Uh, I saw them, of course, pictures always, everything looks so different. I had thought they were much smaller and then I went there and he pulled them out of his garage and I said, oh my God, this is huge. But then I just fell in love with them and I thought I just had to have them. And uh, he actually had a chandelier too, um, hanging from the ceiling, which is part of the set. And But he wouldn't, uh, he said that, you know, he couldn't sell that. Uh, it was... Uh, I think the you know what made it uh, challenging for me was uh, that uh, I was not very sure if I was to bring them home whether I, they would fit in my space mm -hmm. and you know I had to come home and I had to then uh, I once I bought them I brought them home and then I said okay this is the place that they're going to go in and I think uh, they occupy the pride of place now at home they occupy what the pride of place uh -huh. in the house uh, the couple who sold it to me, they were selling their house and moving to Florida. Mm -hmm. So they sold it to me at a, you know, very cheap. Mm -hmm. If you were to go and uh, look for something like this on eBay, I mean, you would uh, look at several thousand dollars for that now. Uh -huh. wow. Uh, wow. Because uh, they are, you, yeah, I, I, I didn't know this at that time. Afterwards, uh -huh. I came yeah. to know. But uh, in fact, there was even this uh, interior decorator. His name is uh, Peter Levi. He has a store in Hingham. Mm -hmm. It's called Beyond Gorgiosity. So when he came to know that I had these, he kept sending me emails, you know, saying that, oh, there's a party for the Wahlburgers uh, next week. You know, can I have them? Can I borrow them? And so I said, no way am I even partying them for a day. <laughs> well, good for you. It's like treasure seeking in a way yes. that you do. And you do it for others with your work. Yes. But I know you also create treasure with uh, these lamps and maybe we only have a few minutes left if you could take a few minutes to talk about yes, your absolutely. passion of making lamps. With yes. Wallpaper rollers. They are, they are vintage wallpaper rollers. Now this was also very serendipitous. I came across this listing with uh, on Craigslist um, uh, of uh, where this man said that he had about 30, 35 of these uh, wallpaper rollers. Um, so some of them are from the wallpaper printing factory that used to be located in Chelsea, mm -hmm. Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they were in operation from the late 1800s to, the, to about 1920, 1930 and they finally tore down the building in early 2000s. Mm -hmm. So uh, he had them and I went to look, you know, he, he, this was in Rockport. Mm -hmm. And so I went to see them and uh, I had seen some pictures of rollers on eBay and Amazon and you know other places. and. Uh, so I knew that uh, I wanted them, but I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with them at that point in time. So I brought them home and then I thought about it and then I said, why don't I, you know, I could easily rig them up as lamps. Mm -hmm. They would make ideal table lamps, though a bit heavy, mm -hmm. um, yeah. because each of them weighs on an average about uh, maybe seven to eight pounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, they're lovely with the designs you have on them. Mm. Right. So the uh, appraised, uh, the, the, the part of the design that you see sticking out, that yeah. is actually uh, part of the roller. Right. Uh -huh. So they were, uh, so how they made these rollers, they used to have, uh, uh, they used to have the artisans come in from Europe um, and uh, they would uh, carve out mm -hmm. the design on mm -hmm. the wallpaper roller and uh, what the, so it's basically felt bounded by metal, uh -huh. brass. Uh -huh. 
and so when they would run it on the uh, uh, printer so they would rig up these wallpaper rollers um, try and picture a newspaper printing where the mm -hmm. paper rolls out from under the rollers right, right. so they would uh, um, paint the roller and uh -huh. then you know the whatever would stick on the uh, raised pattern would mm -hmm. get transferred to the paper, paper as the paper rolled under. That's how you have roses on your wall with the wallpaper then. Exactly. A long time ago. But, exactly. But not using them anymore, right? No, unfortunately. So these rollers are at least 60 to 70 years old. Wow. They're all wow. old growth mahogany Antiques. or cedar. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. And uh, so how many have you created? I have lamps? about 15 to 16 lamps. I also take custom orders. Um, and uh, are they on a website? Uh, yes, I do have a website. Ah, okay. And uh, they, is that your name? Uh, no, it's uh, uh, www.jugaddesign.com. Jugard, okay. Jugard, right. and that's J U G A A D design.com. Ah. So 15 to 16 of those are on display there. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Wow. Well, how is that for you creating um, these? Uh, it's not really. It's it's not really work. Um, it it you know it's part of your pastime and your creative outlet and yes. uh, what happens for you when you maybe end off I don't know a couple seconds if you can tell me because I have one more question for okay, you sure. so uh, f I don't approach them uh, for me like you said they're not a business I mean mm -hmm. I would love to sell them I yeah. the main uh, w the main inspiration for me in on working with them is the fact is the story behind them mm -hmm. and uh, I would hate to think that they would get consigned to the garbage, yeah, you know, yeah. if they didn't, if I didn't bring them back to life mm -hmm. like this. Uh, and bringing things back to life. That's what, what you're doing a bit uh, in, in your work as well as in your creations here. Yes, and uh, I want people, I want to share this with people too, because this is like, you know, who uses wallpaper now? I, not many people, it's no longer the style, popular style, though I think it's sort of coming back. Um, and, but the technology is very different. The way they do it now is very different. Uh, many interesting stories uh, with just a little bit of time. So thank you so much for thank having, you, uh, sharing all of these stories and keep on uh, being vibrant out there in the community. Mm -hmm.